Thank you for joining me today in another video in the AWS database series. Today we'll talk about cloud computing and cloud databases, as well as some of the features that are available and how you could implement them in your own environment. My name is Gene Mays and I'm a database specialist solutions architect with AWS specializing in SQL Server. In today's video, we'll discuss Kerberos authentication, how it's used and why it's more secure, and how you could authenticate against your Amazon RDS for SQL Server instance. So let's go ahead and get started and take a deep dive into Kerberos and into Amazon RDS for SQL Server. In this video, we're strictly going to focus on authenticating our Amazon RDS SQL instance using Kerberos authentication. Keep an eye out for future videos in this series where we talk about the differences between NTLM and Kerberos, as well as the benefits of using Kerberos authentication and the building blocks, which include SPNs or service principal names. We'll also talk about how startup accounts affect Kerberos and how to set them up to use Trust for Delegation. So today's agenda, we'll focus on SQL authentication options. We'll get Kerberos authentication for your RDS SQL instance. We'll review the demo steps and we'll take a deep dive into the demo and Kerberos functionality. So what I've already done, I've set up an Amazon RDS SQL instance and I've joined it to an AWS managed active directory. We've created an AD user that we're going to use to log into our EC2 server, which we deployed to use as a jump server. That's part of the same managed AD and we'll test Kerberos functionality. So connecting to your RDS SQL Server can be done via either SQL authentication or Windows authentication. And with Windows authentication, you could either use NTLM or Kerberos. I also want to touch on the difference between an endpoint and an FQDN or a fully qualified domain name. When you create an RDS SQL instance, whether it's part of a managed AD or a standalone, what you see in the console is an endpoint that is part of the RDS.AmazonAWS dot com domain which is a rot 53 entry that's part of aws dns when you connect to that endpoint there's no spn associated with it which means whether you use a listener endpoint that's part of a multi-z or a dns endpoint which could be used for a standalone or a single az or multi-z configuration it will always default back to ntlm authentication what you want to do when you add your RDS SQL instance to a managed AD is use the fully qualified domain name or FQDN, which is going to be the instance dot domain. And we'll see this during the demo. So Kerberos authentication is a two part process and leverages a ticket granting service or a key distribution center. It leverages encryption as opposed to a challenge response mechanism with password hashing like NTLM. So it is much more secure. Kerberos has been Microsoft's default authentication method since Windows 2000 and still is today. If Kerberos does fail to authenticate the user, the system will automatically attempt to use NTLM instead. So a little bit of history on Kerberos. Kerberos was developed back in the 1980s in MIT, and the name stems from Greek mythology, where you see in this picture it's a three-headed dog that used to guard the gate of Hades. And if you're interested in Greek mythology, it's a picture of a battle between Hades, Kerberos, and Heracles. So just a fun fact for you, um, for your interest. So Kerberos basically um, works through a process. When you use Kerberos authentication, the first thing you do is have a user log into, in this case, our Amazon EC2 instance using their AD credentials. Once the user logs in and authenticates through the domain controller, that user gets a ticket granting ticket from the key distribution center upon being authenticated. And once they launch SQL Server Management Studio, SSMS, to connect using Windows authentication, a service ticket is requested. The key distribution center then provides that service ticket and SSMS then provides the ticket and passes it forward to um, your Amazon RDS SQL Server da database. Once the database checks the validity of the ticket against the key distribution center and validates it, the user is able to connect to the database with Kerberos authentication. And we'll see kind of, we won't see the steps, but we'll see how this process works during our demo. So I also wanted to add how you would set up your RDS SQL Server instance when adding to your managed AD to be incorporated to your on-prem Active Directory. So the steps you would take You'd set up, as I mentioned, your managed AD, your directory service. Then you'd set up your RDS SQL Server instance and you'd enable Windows Integrated Authentication to use once it's added to the managed active directory. 
Once that's done, you create a trust relationship with your on-premises domain and you assign the privileges to your RDS users um, based on your on-prem um, principle of least privilege. So once that's completed, you can incorporate your RDS SQL servers and your managed Active Directory into your on-prem AD as well. So what we're going to do today during the demo, we're going to log in with our AD account to our EC2 jump box as I discussed. We'll check the SPNs that exist for our RDS SQL Server instance and I'll show you um, the FQDN once that's set up. We'll connect to our RDS endpoint and validate the connection type. Then we'll connect to the FQDN and validate the connection type. And as a bonus, we're going to test the link servers. And what I want to mention is that RDS SQL Server does support homogeneous to link servers at this point, but it only supports them with SQL authentication. And the reason is because the accounts that are running RDS SQL Server aren't trusted for delegation, as we talked about earlier. So it's not able to pass the ticket through, and we'll see that during the demo as well. So let's go ahead and take a deep dive into the demo and look at Kerberos functionality. So let's jump right into our console. The two instances we'll be using today are GM Test BI 1 and BI 2 to use as a link server. So in Test BI 1, I wanted you to take a look at the settings real quick. And what we see here is we have the DNS endpoint for GM Test BI with the um, rds.amazonaws.com like we talked about. And the listener endpoint since this is a multi-AZ instance. Also, we see that it's added to the corp BI INT dot com domain and we're going to go ahead and connect to our EC2 instance to go ahead and uh, log on and test Kerberos functionality. So I have my EC2 instance here I'm going to use as a jump server so let's connect to this in RDP into the box. Use the RDP client and download the remote desktop file and we'll go ahead and open it and I'll pause while we go ahead and uh, wait for it to come up. So now as we talked about I'm going to go ahead and log on with uh, AD authentication, so core PI INT backslash admin, which is the account I'm going to be using. And I'm going to go ahead and connect to my instance. And you'll see it coming up right now. And I'll pause while this instance comes up. So now I'm going to go ahead and open a command prompt window to be able to run my SPN commands. So I could see what's out there. And first I want to see who I'm logged in as, who am I, and you can see I'm logged in as Corp BI INT admin. Now I'm going to take and run my Kerberos SPN commands against the GM test BI instance and see what's out there in Corp BI. When I run this command, you see that I'm looking at the service principal names associated with GM test BI 1. And you notice we have gmtestbi1.corpbiint.com. We have the names of the actual um, boxes, the servers. But we don't have anything associated with the endpoints as we talked about. So let's go ahead and go to our um, SSMS window. So first, I'm going to use Windows Authentication. And I'm going to go ahead and log in to my endpoint. And this is going to be Windows Authentication with the same box. So then I'm going to go ahead and take the select query that we talked about to validate the connectivity. And what that select query is, is select net transport and OS scheme from DM executive connections where I am connected as the user that we mentioned. And I'll just do a select S user. name to see who I'm logged in is. So with Windows Authentication, I should be able to connect this Corp BI INT admin. So that should give me Kerberos, right? But no, it gives me NTLM. And the reason is exactly what we talked about. That there is no SPN associated with the endpoint. Now, let's go ahead and connect to our listener endpoint as well. well again with, with Windows Authentication. And we're going to grab the same connection string and we get the same result. Again, we get NTLM. 
So now what happens when we use the fully qualified domain name? So now we're going to jump to corpbiint.com and we'll run a new query here. And this gives us Kerberos authentication because now we are authenticating against a, a fully qualified domain name that has an existing service principal name in the domain. As you can see right here, we see GM test BI port BIINT.com using port 1433. We see the name of the server. So that gives us the capability of using that as Kerberos with Kerberos authentication. So one thing I also want to show you is I went ahead and created a link server, two link servers actually. So in this link server, if I did test TD, you see I use be made using the security context with server. Um, with SQL authentication. And when I look at that link server, I go to the catalogs and I see the, the instances. So let's connect to that box so we can validate that it's the same thing. So we're going to use Windows authentication and we see GM test BI 2, which is exactly the box. If I script it out, that you see here that I am connecting GM test BI to the corp BIINT.com. But now I'm going to try to use the link server and let's go ahead and script it out as well. So you can see what I'm doing here. So same thing, except I'm using password authentication. So when you look at the GUI, you see the security is be made using the logins current security context. So what happens here when I try to use the catalog, I see I only have default. I don't see the other databases. So when I go here, I see NT authority anonymous login, which is exactly what our Kerberos error means. When the account that's running the services, the RDS service, can't delegate. It's not trusted for delegation. So whenever you connect to an RDS instance, you cannot use a link server with Widow's authentication to pass the token on. So this gives you an idea of how to use Kerberos with, um, with RDS and how the authentication process works. Thank you for spending the time with me today. I hope this video was useful and what we learned can be implemented in your own environment. Have a great rest of the day and we will see you in our future videos. As always, happy cloud computing from everyone here at AWS.